Russia has just started waging a new war, a war on influences. The last few months in Russia have been a time where a new streak of arrests has started, and this time it's not opposition activists or something like that, this time the targets are actually some of the most richest, most prominent and most highest earning influences of Russia. We're talking about ruble billionaires here, okay? And guys, I know, yes, the ruble is a joke right now or whatever, but still, that is a lot of money. And all these super rich and famous Russian influences right now are suddenly getting uh, very conveniently arrested for a uh, felony tax evasion. And basically, to put it short, I think that all of this is just part of a huge psyop that is actually very possibly closely related to the current events in Ukraine. Now hold on guys, let me cook, okay? So here's the thing. On this channel before, I've already talked about how modern Russia in a lot of ways is pretty similar to the times of Stalin. When it comes to censorship, the political persecution and everything, and even the rhetoric and the aesthetic. And well guys, now I think we're in a new stage of repeating history because Russia has just hit a record budget deficit because of all the spendings on their military and the lack of oil and gas profits. And now it basically seems like Russia is literally shaking down Instagram influences for their billions to keep the economy alive. And it personally kind of almost reminds me of the USSR in the 1930s, where wealthier peasants called kulaks basically became the enemy of the state and were essentially persecuted, jailed, deported, and robbed of everything, essentially for the government's sake. And this happened to millions of people. And I also feel like these arrests of influences say a lot about the current Russian society and essentially what the Russian government is trying to do to influence the society and to make the average Russian's opinion of the system in Russia a little bit better. But this is all very fascinating stuff, so please. Stay tuned. Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, doing stay? Welcome to a brand new video. And in today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about the Russian war on influences and why it's so important. And well, since we're on the topic of the internet and internet censorship, I think it would be very fitting to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN. A VPN is essentially a type of program that can switch and mask your IP and DNS address, being the best way to ensure that your internet connection is encrypted, safe and secure, and also allowing you to visit websites that are not available in your country. Right now, Atlas VPN is having a huge discount deal, which actually allows you to get 3 years of VPN protection for just $1.70 a month, with 6 extra months for free for my subscribers, with a 30-day money-back guarantee if you change your mind. This offer is time-limited, so make sure you check it out by visiting the link in the description below. Now look, I myself have been an avid VPN user for ages now because obviously I come from Russia, a country where like half of the internet is banned at this point. Now that I don't live in Russia though, I can use a VPN for very simple but also very nice things, for example being able to watch a movie or a show that is not available in your region. For example, I love The Office, but I just cannot watch it on Netflix in Georgia. Using Atlas VPN though, I can change my virtual location to any country I want and for example, I can choose the UK and go to Netflix and there it is. Atlas VPN can also help you keep your Google searches in private, stop ads and malware, and help you save some money while shopping online. And best part is, it works on an unlimited amount of devices. So, what are you waiting for? If you want to get the best VPN deal on the market, then make sure to go over to the link down in the description and get 3 years of Atlas VPN for just $1.70 a month with 6 extra months for free. Many thanks to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. So, before we start talking about these arrests, first of all, I need to make one thing clear. Pretty much all of the people that were arrested as part of this huge campaign are basically scammers. In fact, it's a specific type of scammers known in Russian as info tsigane or info gypsies. Essentially, what these scammers usually do is that they create and sell tons of nonsensical courses on basically how to make your dreams come true, how to become rich and successful. All of these people claim to be geniuses in psychology and basically scientists, even though they actually don't even have the proper education. They constantly run all sorts of scammy giveaways to get new subscribers, they often advertise scams and scammy websites to their fans, and as a result of that, these people make millions of dollars. And the thing about these so-called info gypsies is that they're very popular, they have millions of subscribers, their fan base is basically a cult, but at the same time, the majority of the Russian public hates these people, which logically makes them a great target for the governments, and this is where everything comes in. So, the first influencer that fell as part of uh, Putin's decolacization is a famous Russian Instagram blogger Lerchik, full name Valeria Chikalina, and also her husband Artyom Chikalin. Lerchik is a pretty famous figure, she's got over 10 million followers on Instagram, and essentially what this family has done is that they turned their little family Instagram blog into a multi-million dollar scam business. And just so that you guys have an idea of how rich these people are, they own tons of real estate that is collectively worth over 1 billion rubles, as well as having a bunch of cars that are collectively worth over 145 million rubles. And this is only 
only the official stuff that they've declared. Now you guys might think, so what do they do exactly that they have so much money? Well, they do massive giveaways all the time, they constantly release all these aforementioned online courses on how to become successful or whatever, and they even have their own makeup brand in Russia, which nobody actually buys and uh, people essentially only buy their cosmetics because these guys run a thing called Wheel of Fortune, where basically if you buy their makeup products, you actually get a chance to participate in a giveaway, spin the Wheel of Fortune and win great prizes. So yes, it is basically gambling. And basically, just like you might imagine from any rich Instagram influence, uh, these people were flexing their wealth a lot. For example, check out this video they recorded with their kids. I really have nothing to say, guys, to be honest. Well, in March of 2023, this entire family was arrested by Russia for felony tax evasion. Essentially, the government is claiming that Lerchek and her husband owe the government about 300 million rubles in taxes. And it was basically essentially a classic scheme where in Russia, essentially, you pay a higher tax if you go over certain thresholds of income. And basically, what they did is that they funneled all of their money through relatives and friends and their, like, business accounts, essentially, over the idea, basically, to just pay less tax. And as a result of this, a criminal case case was opened, the house was raided, and the police found a lot of very interesting things, for example, luxury cars, tons of cash, and even bars of solid gold that were worth millions. And so right now, Lerchik and her husband are basically on house arrest, they're not allowed to use the internet, and they're basically waiting for the trial and actually are possibly facing another money laundering felony. So, as far as the whole situation, I don't want to comment on anything. I wanted to say that we didn't leave from Russia. Надолго не уезжали, слова плохого не говорили. Претензии, которые к нам есть, постараемся в ближайшее время все их погасить. Вот. И на этом вся эта история закончится. Также для всех людей, которые злорадствуют. Вы хотя бы 500 тысяч рублей в год платите налогов? Я не думаю. Вот. А у нас там за последние три года мы заплатили около полутора миллиардов рублей. And yeah, guys, as you can tell from that clip, uh, Artyom, the husband, has said that they didn't run from the country or anything. So, you know, they're very patriotic people. And overall, you know, they support everything that's going on, I guess. And as far as I understand, there's a lot of rumors that the husband's father is actually a well-connected Russian politician. And essentially, that corruption money was probably used to fund the business in the first place. So, you know, all I pretty much have to say here is that, you know, the people who supported and reaped the benefits of the Putin regime are now actually becoming the victims of that Putin regime. So, uh, very ironic. But one thing you guys gotta take away from all of this is that the people in Russia are very happy seeing this because she's basically a scammer so the entirety of the Russian YouTube right now is basically full of videos clowning on Lerchik and clowning her arrest and everything and people are essentially painting this arrest as an act of long-awaited justice remember this guys we'll get back to this later now the second person who fell victim to this entire campaign is Yelena Blinovskaya she's also a big influencer with over 5 million followers on Instagram and essentially she's yet another scammer she actually became quite infamous in Russia recently and even I've heard of her because last year she had an interview with Ksenia Sobchak, Russian journalist, and uh, it was absolutely insufferable. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> and to put it short, Blinovska is essentially also an Instagram influencer that turned like a lifestyle guru coach. And she actually created her own program called The Marathon of Wishes. Yes, that's the actual name, and I don't even know how to describe it, to be honest. It is essentially yet another success course that is basically taking advantage of poor, lonely, or divorced women and is basically, you know, promising them that they can achieve everything they want and that all their dreams will come true. I've already actually kind of talked about this phenomenon on this channel when I was talking about the fake Z psychics of Russia. And Blinovsky is basically more of the same. She essentially prides herself as a person who's able to make people's wishes come true or whatever, and there's this whole esoteric aura around it. I don't want to be able to Вот так Лена выглядит жизнь, я себе это говорила. Когда ты себе говоришь да, когда ты говоришь да своим желаниям, вот до этого можно дойти. And she basically has a sort of a cult like fan base. And I guess one thing that I would like to add is that she's also rather patriotic because uh, she actually had a film. She made a movie called The Marathon of Wishes, which was basically a full on movie basically advertising her entire scam. And best part, guys, that movie was actually funded by the Russian government using Russian taxpayer money. So, uh, yes, this is yet another very ironic story. Blinovska was arrested in April quite recently actually on the border with Belarus, trying to escape to Belarus, which is like a classic escape route, because if you go to Belarus, essentially even if you want it in Russia, sometimes you can get out of Belarus anyway to some other country. So yeah, Blinovska was arrested, and now she's facing a felony, tax evasion charge, and uh, according to the government, she actually owes over 900 million rubles to the Russian government in taxes. 
<laughs> that's fucking insane. That's like more money than most Russians will see ever in their life. That, that is more money than every, that every Russian has seen in their life, actually. And basically, she's also on house arrest now and is waiting for her trial. 900 million rubles, man. I mean, taking into the account the fact that she's actually bragged about how much taxes she's paid before. Сколько ты зарабатываешь в год? Forbes подсчитывает примерно, что это 300 миллионов в год. Uh, какие реальные цифры? То есть, ну, та сумма, которую ты сейчас назвала, это столько примерно я плачу налогов в год. 300 миллионов налогов, прости, или налогов с этой суммы? Нет, нет, налогов. Я, я плачу налогов не один десяток миллионов. This is all just so ironic. And of course, just like the previous influencer, Blinovska is also no stranger to flexing on everybody and, you know, showing her expensive life and trips and all her cars and everything. And guess what, guys? Once again, just like with Lerchik, everybody on the Russian internet, pretty much everybody in Russia is super happy that she got arrested. And the third influencer that was affected by this, I want to just mention briefly, is Alexandra Mitro. Russia, essentially yet another of these, you know, lifestyle guru types. But the thing that's different about Alexandra is that she actually left Russia a while back and currently lives in Dubai, so she was not arrested. However, apparently, according to the media, first they started a criminal case against her, but now there's none because she actually managed to pay off all the debts to the Russian government or whatever. It was also like millions and millions. And apparently, you know, she managed to basically get away with it, which is, you know, I wonder how. I wonder how that happens. It's not like Russia is a country where there's no rule of law, so anything can happen. Happen and uh, <laughs> if you're rich and powerful enough, things like this are easily discussed, you know. So yes, now that I told you guys about the phenomena of these Russian influencer scammers and how they got arrested, let's analyze this and let's think about why the Russian government is doing this. In my opinion, this basically does two things. Number one is that arresting these people and, you know, allocating their tax money to uh, where it's needed, right? The Russian government is essentially kind of creating a new income source for itself. And also, now the government can basically recruit these influencers as potential propaganda out outlets. And the second thing that this is supposed to do, in my opinion, is actually to attempt to sort of satisfy the general Russian public and their hunger for justice. By essentially arresting these well-known capitalists, who have a reputation of defrauding and scamming the Russian people, and therefore improving the public's perception of the governments and, you know, the police and everything, and also creating a ton of buzz in the media, and therefore actually covering the information about all the political arrests and the political persecution that is currently going on. So let me elaborate. Point one. Uh, like I've already said, earlier in the video, Russia is having some financial trouble right now, you know. Right now, the Russian budget deficit has actually hit the full year target in the first two and a half months. And also, obviously, a ton of people who pay a lot of tax, such as very, you know, high-earning IT specialists, etc., essentially valuable workforce, and also a ton of huge international companies also left Russia, so all the tax being collected is way less now. And, you know, I may be wrong, but honestly, the way it seems to me from the outside is that all of these influences just seem like, you know, a nice little shakedown opportunity for the Russian government. Actually, maybe I am right, because the chairman of the Russian state Duma, Vyacheslav Volodin, has literally uh, come out with a statement saying that the uh, unpaid taxes gathered from these influencers should be uh, sent uh, to the veterans of the special military operation and stuff. So uh, it's not even speculation at this point. <laughs> but also another point is that personally I think all of this is basically just for show because I'm pretty sure that since all of these people you know Blinovska, Lerchik etc they've been actually not paying their taxes and avoiding taxes for a while now and they've been running their businesses for years essentially getting billions of rubles and profits and actually being vocal about it and talking about their profits and their taxes and how much taxes they pay I'm guessing they were in a good position where cheating on their taxes was an option and I feel like the government or the tax services knew about their unpaid taxes because when you're making billions it's hard to get unnoticed, right? However, the government has only decided to take action now, you know, when money is really running dry. And in this sense, yeah, like, this pretty much reminds me of the USSR policy against kulaks. And also, like I already said, this is a huge opportunity for Russia to essentially just recruit these influencers as propaganda pundits. Because most of these people have already been in contact with the government before. You know, none of these people have exactly ever been, you know, huge critics of Putin or anything, so it's pretty obvious that the government might just, you know, offer them a less harsher penalty or uh, uh, get out of jail for free card just so that you know they agree to spout propaganda and now the most important in my opinion the point number two is that essentially all of this is just a psyop that is here to sort of improve the general public's opinion of the police and the system itself you guys gotta realize right the regular person right now in russia is going through a lot of hardships it's you know anxiety about the future the anxiety about you know safety of your relatives especially male relatives of course all sorts of financial problems inflation layoffs etc etc and obviously guys 
there is no way, there is no way the Russian governments will allow the Russian people to actually realize that the reason for all these hardships and all of these terrible events is actually the government in power. There is no way that could happen, so it is always nice to sort of create boogeymen. And that could be any of the classics, you know, it could be the evil West, or the Ukrainian Nazis, or you know, the evil liptards of Russia, you know, the national traitors that are, you know, trying to destroy Russia because they're all paid by the West or whatever. Well guys, let's just add these scammy influences of Instagram to that list, because uh, these people are the reason why our country is in such terrible distress. And look, here's the thing you guys gotta realize, right? I'm not trying to defend these people in any way, right? I've already said that I do think they're scammers and I do think they're bad people. And essentially, I feel like their business practices, you know, this attempt to lure people in with all these, you know, lifestyle coaching of how to get rich or successful or whatever. The psychology of their business lies in the fact that the Russian people are really feeling like they have no impact on their own life at this point, you know? When you live in an authoritarian state, in a dictatorship at this point, maybe, it's really hard to bring actual change to your life, so you gotta, you know, essentially coach and turn to hope that a miracle would happen, that she would become rich and successful or whatever. And that is why people tune in into all this, you know, scammy esoteric bullshit. So I do think that these people essentially are profits enough of the death of freedom in Russia, right? And you know, essentially, here's one thing you guys gotta realize is that a lot of Russians, especially those that are unhappy with the situation in the country, you know, especially those struggling financially, these people want some sort of social justice, right? And everybody in Russia knows that everybody in politics, you know, all of the governmental workers, etc. are all corrupt and, you know, they're all embezzling our country, but we cannot do anything about them. So basically what Russia does here is that they're gelling these, you know, rich affluent influences that are, you know, constantly, you know, flexing their wealth on Instagram or whatever, and also are making money by scamming people. And therefore, when the police arrest these people, the Russian people are like, damn, you know, yeah, the police sucks, you know, there's crazy stuff happening, but at least, you know, sometimes they do the right thing. Sometimes, I guess, the regime is actually fair. Like, look at this. These people deserve to be in prison. I think the biggest irony here, though, is that it's not really justice for, you know, the scams that they do. Russia is completely fine with all the scamming that they're doing. The problem is that they didn't pay their taxes, right? But to the average Ivan, that doesn't even matter at this point, right? And I think this is like social justice that is literally based in the Soviet propaganda where, you know, the bourgeois were, you know, shown as the sort of the enemies of the people, etc. These are basically the new bourgeois. And in general, people are always happy to see rich assholes go down. Especially when these rich assholes are flexing their money any way they can while the average person in Russia right now is, you know, going through terrible times, you know, living paycheck to paycheck and essentially is unsure of the future, right? So, in my opinion, the government jailing people like this is literally a psyop to raise the people's support for the government. And also another point that I mentioned is that all these news are creating huge buzz in the press right now, you know, these are some of the most famous people in Russia, obviously. Everybody's talking about this right now and the thing is that at the same time, you know, the special military operation is still going on, people still are getting arrested for protesting or for commenting the wrong thing online every single day and essentially with cases like these, I feel like the Russian government is sort of shutting down the conversation about all the political persecution going on. For example, the ridiculous case of Masha Maskalova, whose dad essentially got sent to prison because uh, she, a 12-year-old child, drew an anti-war picture in school. These are crazy cases, and I think the Russian government realizes that it's not a good look for them, so let's arrest some famous person, make ourselves look better, get some money, and also, the people will love it. It's an absolute win. So yeah guys, what do I have to say in the end? Uh, I guess we actually are in the times of, you know, Putin's personal decolacization. And I don't even know what to say, man. This entire just situation is just very fishy on every single level. And that is personally the reason why I believe it's a huge psyop. And even if it's not a psyop, even if this is all, you know, completely random, it still achieves those goals that I've laid out in this video, you know? Essentially conducting a huge brainwashing campaign by doing this. So, uh, Russian propaganda wins again, guys. I guess. <laughs> but I just thought that this was absolutely fascinating, you know, so, you know, I just had to make a video about it. Anyways, guys, yeah, I guess that is going to be pretty much it for today's video, though. If you guys did enjoy it, then please make sure to slap the like on it. As well, guys, if you want to support me additionally, then go over to the link down in the description, become a YouTube member. You can also do a super thanks underneath this video. And yeah, guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.